Welcome back to the channel. How are you today? And I thought we would delve into something that is a little bit divisive within the Fallout community and um, and talk about it a little bit. And I'll give you my uh, 10 cents worth on it. And that is mods. The use of mods in Fallout 4. Um, I've been using mods for a very, very long time, but I've also played through the game as a vanilla game as it was designed by the developers and there is um, there are a mixed kind of opinion in the uh, the community to whether mods are a good thing or a bad thing so let's investigate just how they work in the game today and um, you can make your own own mind up should be good let's do it so before we get started today, I know this is a little bit of a controversial subject. Well, it isn't, it isn't. But uh, I respect those people who um, like to play Fallout 4 uh, the way it was designed, without any mods, the vanilla version of the game. And um, yeah, res I understand that you make that decision. It is a single player game, Fallout 4. You can play it any which way you like. And I respect that you uh, prefer to play it without any assistance, without any mods. And I think there is a little bit of a stigma when I mention the word mods that you think it's cheating. Today I'm going to walk, walk you through... Um, just my my feeling on the game, some of the experiences that I've had with mods, uh, good and bad, and why sometimes you just have no choice to to use them. So please be respectful. If you're going to leave comments on this video, please be respectful. Um, if you don't like mods, you don't like using them. Um, if you're going to leave a comment, please do not leave something that is uh, defamatory or uh, abusive, because basically what will happen is that comment will be taken down, and then you won't be able to participate on this channel. Let's keep it upbeat and positive. I'm not saying that you can't have a a, a different view on this. Just be respectful in your comments. Okay, so mods uh, in Fallout 4. Where do you find them? Why would you use them? Let's get into the discussion and hopefully you learn a little today. So G4, why would you use mods? Why do you need to use mods on uh, Fallout 4? I mean, Bethesda Bethesda love the modding community. Let's start there. They love the modding community. They, um, they've they had a relationship with the modding community going back as far as Skyrim. And certainly you can mod the heck out of Skyrim if you like. And they introduced it into Fallout 4 fairly quickly, um, both on console and PC. And they were talking about uh, releasing it for um, Fallout 76. But Fallout 76 is a little bit of a different beast. And uh, they haven't, at the time of uh, recording, they haven't uh, released mods on Fallout 76 yet. They've, talk they've talked about it a lot, but they certainly haven't pulled the, uh, pulled the trigger on that one, so to speak. So... Uh, why would you use mods? Well, there there are a number of reasons why you might use mods in the game. Um, one of the first and most obvious ones, and not the, one of the reasons I, I started using mods, I'd played through the game, I'd played through the main campaign, um, you know, completed it, uh, the whole the whole storyline, and um, I got during uh, completing this the storyline, I got into the building component of Fallout Four. And that's where I'm, I've met many of the community members that uh, that partake in this channel and uh, still stream the game to this day. So I met a lot of people through uh, the building component of Fallout. And um, yeah, what the um, building component Bethesda offered uh, straight up and at the gate is pretty comprehensive, but there is so much more scope. Um, uh, to use all kinds of different assets that Bethesda don't offer and so I started using mods for um, for that game for a number of reasons for uh, unlimited resources um, being able to place um, certain pieces or attributes in place in certain places etc etc so that's where my journey started with mods but there's many many reasons why mods are used in this game and one of the main ones if you look at one of the most successful um, videos on this channel um, it is a uh, it is a video that's very short talking about a glitch in the game and um, that glitch still exists to this day even though the the um, even though the game is nine year old nine years old at this point. And that revolves around the Brotherhood of Steel's fire support mission 
um, which you do with Pollard and Dance. Now, um, there are ways to get around that, which are fairly complicated, but the easiest way to get around um, that mission and be able to continue with the game is to use uh, various mods to do so. So there is one reason f for using mods. Um, there are several modders who have gone in, and one in particular that I use all the time that go in, and they've they've gone through and they've fixed all the bugs that Bethesda haven't in the game, and um, that is a mod called the unofficial patch, and that's another reason why I use mods so that I get a better gaming experience. Now, the number of mods that are available on on uh, Bethesda.net are. are comprehensive and they cover all kinds of things a couple more reasons why i use them um I, for instance i have dog i like to have dog mate as my companion and it because i use that mod i can have two companions instead of one um there are mods there for improving the way the map looks improving the way that the speech works there's all kinds of stuff so i, I use a lot of quality of life mods uh, to make the game look better and play better but also use a ton of mods for for building and again uh, you know in a single player game um the only person i'm harming is myself if i was using them in a co-op or a multiplayer game i could understand why it would be a problem um but I've got like I don't know I've got at least a hundred days or more in Fallout Four, and um, I've done everything that I need to do, and so I do run some quality of life mods. But there are so many mods that you can run. There's armor mods. There's weapon mods, and um, mods that look the completely change the environment. Um, a lot of people, uh, there are a lot of developers that have gone through and they've put um, they've put new quests into the game and new playing experiences through mods. If you think of the one that's coming up, which is uh, Fallout London, uh, Fallout Miami are, are, are a couple that uh, come to, to mind. Uh, the Bleachers, if you haven't seen my playthrough of the Bleachers, again, they, they just they add new characters, new quests. If you're done with the game and you're looking to play more, then that gives you an option. You know, there's, there's textures and all kinds of stuff that you can do with mods in this game. And so I think really, from our point of view, and you may be missing out on a whole lot of new experiences by not using mods, and um, they are the main reasons why I would suggest you do consider using mods. Um, but I also encourage you to go through the game in a vanilla state without any mods first, and uh, once you get to the point where you finish the main storyline, then you can come back and start using them. Um, apart from if you get stuck on fire support mission. So having said that, what are the risks at using mods? Because when I load up my mods, I get this message from Bethesda saying, basically, um, put the mods at your own risk, your experience issues with mods. You can disable mods via the load order and go back to the original save at any time, but you know, you will have achievements um, disabled, etc, etc. So what are the um, what are the risks when you're using mods for the first time and are there any risks to you for? Well, absolutely there are risks. I've, I've, um, I've used uh, mods in the past that have completely crashed my game. I've completely screwed up my game. Um, they are a little bit of a nightmare to get rid of once that happens to you. Um, but and and the pro I think the biggest problem is that these mods are all made by independent developers um, that have a, a varying levels of skill. Um, there are some absolutely fantastic. Uh, mod developers who really, really take the time to put their mod together and really understand how it interacts with the game, and then it's a sliding scale from that downwards. So, you know, sometimes you'll get uh, conflicts with other mods. Uh, sometimes you'll get conflicts with the, the the game scripting and the way that the game is designed and the the, the engine that it's designed around. There's all kinds of things that can potentially happen to you it has happened to me a couple of times i'm not going to lie um and i had to delete the mod and then and that's the worst case scenario i had to reinstall the game and then rebuild my mod library um, it does happen but i've got to say i use a huge amount of mods um 
on a daily basis when I'm building or if I'm playing the game and um, I've managed to find the ones that work for me and I have very, very few um, few problems and uh, you know, I've stuck with those over a long, long period of time. And so, you know, for the last, I would say, four or five years, I've had very, very few problems with any mods that I've ever run. Um, some of the mods that you download just straight out either don't show up or don't work in the game, or um, there are different mechanisms for uh, the way that you have to... Uh, actually activate them and that's something that I think it's important that we talk about now in how to activate the games in uh, the mods in game and uh, maybe we talk about where we get our mods and how to search them first and then we'll come back and talk about how various mods activate in game one of the places that I encourage you to search for mods or go looking for mods if you're thinking of dabbling or, or getting your feet wet is bethesda.net if you hop on there, you can um, you go through a little bit of a login process if you haven't already done that, and you can link your gamer the profile or your gamer tag uh, to your mod library, and so it makes life just that little bit easier um, to search mods at. And you can see I'll I'll quickly go into my mods here, and there is my game library which syncs up or used to sync up. <laughs> Used to sync up with uh, with my console. Unfortunately, with the next gen update, it has broken the link a little bit lately. But you can see I've got a ton of mods already in here. But the the I just find the searching on uh, Bethesda.net is just so much better and so much easier to do. You can filter what you want to see down here, and um, what system you're on. You can kind of filter with all these different things here and find what you're looking for. Um, and the search engine is just a lot more user friendly, at least for me in, in this format, uh, than it is doing it directly on console. But if you haven't got this option or you, d you don't want to give your gamer uh, information out or whatever it might be, then um, we'll, we'll hop over to the console and I want to show you how to do it on console. So here we are on my Xbox now. There are a couple options here and uh, for grabbing mods. I'm going to talk about the Creation Club uh, first, and then I'll talk about the mods set, uh, library. So you can see uh, this is on the main screen when you first load up Fallout 4, and you've got all your kind of character loads and stuff like that, your add-ons, etc. And then you've got Creation Club now. Creation Club. Um, I must warn you, uh, I'll say a couple of things about Creation Club. I'm not a fan of it. I never have been. I've got a very, I've made a very uh, uh, deliberate stance on what I think and about Creation Club. Putting that aside though, um, these are paid mods, but they are sanctioned by Bethesda. And so they, they're accredited by Bethesda, so they will work without um, breaking your game. Um, but they are paid mods. So... If you want to go down this route and you're just you want to stick your um, feet in the water, so to speak, and try a few things uh, without too much risk, this might be um, this might be what you want to go for. Um, you can see there's a number of different um, different categories there that you can actually uh, utilize um, to download again. I'm not a huge fan of this, but anyway, we won't talk about that. It is all pay, paid mods. And then in the second section, which is unpaid mods, and we spoke about the risks of using these, um, there is just a huge library. And this is basically the library that we just showed you on Bethesda.net. Um, one of the things I would say about doing it this way is the interface is a little bit trickier to use. And using the search um, function on this is, yeah, it can be a little bit tricky, but you can actually scroll down and see what's popular, um, highest rated, etc., etc. So you can scroll up and down if you don't want to use the, the search um, engine in this. Um, you can see what's featured, etc., etc. Something might pop out at you. Um, 
and then it's into categories but it is a lot of scrolling through it you can see it's taken time to just kind of populate the the uh, thumbnail to be able to search and um yeah this is a bit of a clunky way of doing it if you want to see the trick that i've come up with um to search the library i will look at, leave a link to a video i recently made where um when they did break um when they did break the kind of link and break the mods in this game with the new gen update there is a little bit of a a trick to searching in this game uh, but once you find what you need you can download it and it will appear in your load order or your your mod library which i'll talk about the load order in a little bit um and there you go your library there should mimic what's on bethesda.net if you've linked them uh, as I said, it's broken at the moment, and you can you also have the option of favoriting them, adding them to your favorites, and then you you know where they are unless you have to um, you know redo your uh, library at any time or something conflicts, and that will happen from time to time when they update the game. I must I must tell you that that um, every so often there'll be an update to the game, and your mod this mod library here will just completely. Uh, disappear and so I would encar highly encourage you to either make a video of this or you know record your screen or do whatever and, and store it away or put them in or favorite the mods that you're using because um, yeah you, at times you will have to um, you will have to rebuild your library and um, it can be an absolute pain if you like me you've got a lot of different mods around so just be aware that that is a thing now there are different ways to activate mods uh, in your um, in your game as well and every different mod um, has a different way of doing this some will just appear others you have to go through a process so what i encourage you to do is read your description very very carefully um on there you go down there how to um activate things um it's extremely extremely important um look at something like place anywhere for instance it says how to use uh, using advanced features um notes and all kinds of stuff load order this uh, person has gone through uh, gone to a lot of trouble to tell you exactly um how to use the mod um where to place it in your load order uh, potential conflicts all kinds of stuff and um, not every developer does this with some of the other mods you will need um let me find place anywhere for you very quickly so uh sorry workshop re rearranged for you again you can see here that this uh, mod developer does offer a whole lot of um, support and you can read through the support either here or, or on bethesda.net but he also has goggle do, uh, docs that he provides uh, but with something like workshop rearranged having it in the right place in the load order is incredibly important and the second thing is you might need additional mods to run um, things like for instance here is the, the master plan uso um, and various other things i need additional mods to make it be able to work with this particular uh, mod in the game so there are a number of things that you'll have to do in game to make things work you might have to uh, load a hollow tape for instance you might have to actually make a grenade which uh, workshop anywhere does there's a whole lot of ways of doing this. So just read through those descriptions very, very carefully. And um, if you get stuck, there are go to the, uh, the mod page on Bethesda.net and just work through. A lot of these developers will actually respond to you. You can actually send them a message and they will respond to you if needed. Um, but um, yeah there are also a number of tutorials online on how the mods work and if you get into problems and i may make another uh, video after this one just uh, giving you some tips if you do get into trouble how you can resolve those 
So that's a quick uh, overview or rundown of what, what mods are about and um, how they work in Fallout 4 and why you would use them. It is my point of view on them. I've tried to stay as neutral as possible on this. I do use mods. I admit I use mods. I love doing it. I think it's taken uh, Fallout 4 to a different level by doing that for me personally. And it's it's just continued to make me play the game. And so it speaks to the longevity of Fallout 4. But everybody has a different point of view on this. And it, it, I, 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 am, I respect that and understand that. As I said in my intro, it is a single player game and so I'm free to choose the experience that I actually personally like. Guys, if you've got any questions or you need any help or whatever, or if you'd like to see me put a video together talking about some um, fixes when you do get into trouble with mods, some general fixes, I'm happy to do that. Just leave some comments down below. I'd try and respond to every comment uh, that is made on this channel. If it has been informative and it has helped you out, a like rating is always appreciated as it does help the channel a lot. And we will catch you next time on Gaming for XP. See ya.